Hey everybody, it's me, Adam Yopes with 18 Realty LLC, and I'm here once again to share with you the latest news and information for the DC metro real estate market. Last month, no big surprise, things continued to remain slow. We are in the winter months, so that's not unexpected. Uh, typically, the winter months go until about February and then start picking up again in early spring or March or April. And that's what we're expecting to see this year. It's no different. Uh, we don't have a crazy first-time homebuyer tax credit to tend with, so I think we're going to see a normal real estate cycle for the first time in a long time uh, this year in 2011. We're sort of establishing the baseline that we're going to be measured against in the future years. Uh, now, that being said, um, I'm reporting numbers um, this month based on February's real estate activity, and I'm comparing them to the month prior in January. And what we're seeing here is really not interesting. Uh, there aren't very many big changes to report, so it should be a pretty quick video this month. But let me just highlight a few things that I think might, we might want to keep an eye on. Okay, real quick, the first thing we're going to be talking about are median home sale prices for our area. The nuts and bolts of it are this. Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia are strengthening. Those home prices have increased on average, the median sales prices have increased in the past 12 months. The other two market areas, on the other hand, that I've, I've been keeping an eye on, Baltimore Metro and the Maryland suburbs have in fact decreased in median home values over the past 12 months. We'll keep a close eye on it, but right now it's looking like the two horses that are re leading the race in terms of market value are Washington, D.C. first and Northern Virginia second. We'll keep a close eye on it and report on it again next month. Next I'm going to be talking about market activity in these various uh, markets that I've been tracking. Northern Virginia has the most activity. Uh, they're also the largest area, so that's not unusual. Uh, last month they did increase um, in the number of sales about 6%. Um, the other areas, Baltimore, Metro, uh, Maryland suburbs and Washington DC all decreased uh, in the number of activity or the number of sales relative to the month prior in January. Um, however, if you look at that over a 12 month period, the story is exactly the flip flop. Uh, Northern Virginia has actually decreased um, this month, uh, February 2011, compared to February of 2010. It was a decrease of about 8.5%. Um, in that area. The other three areas all experienced increases. They were slight, but the market activity um, in February 2011 is greater than it was in February 2010 for the, the three remaining market areas. That's Baltimore Metro, Maryland Suburbs, and Washington, D.C. So that might be a, a measure that suggests that those markets are in fact heating up because there's been more sales activity reported this month as compared to 12 months ago. And the opposite is true in Northern Virginia. We'll keep an eye on it and I'll keep you informed on what's going on. All right, the next market measure is days on market. This is a measure that shows how long it takes on average to sell properties in these market areas. See where it's reported to take about uh, three months or 90 days, 92 days to be exact. And then the, the last market, the market that's lagging uh, in terms of uh, the, the number of days to sell a, uh, a property is Baltimore Metro, where it takes uh, over 132 days um, on average to sell a property, or 132 days, I should say. Uh, it's over 100 days, and, and we're looking at about close to uh, four months in that market area. So we'll keep a close eye on it and let you know how things progress. But right now, on average, uh, in the stronger market areas, it takes about 75 days. And in the weaker market areas, it takes up to 132 days uh, to sell a property. All right. The last market measure I'm going to be talking about today is the list price to sold price ratio. And that's a comparison of the sold price to the list price. If a property were to sell for exactly what it was listed for, the ratio would be 100%. Okay, so in this market, right now, sellers are getting about 92% on average uh, their list price. So in other words, sellers should be prepared to accept about an 8% loss or a, a less um, on, the sales, on the final contract sales price uh, compared to the list price. 
That's been about 92% here for the last 12 months for most of our market area. Now remember, that doesn't include the seller subsidy. So as a seller, you should be prepared to accept 8% um, less than what the market value is that you come up with uh, with your listing agent plus a possible seller subsidy if the buyer is going to request it. And right now it is a strong buyer's market, so I would expect to see uh, those type of requests here on offers. But I'll keep a close eye on the list price to sold price ratio and let you know if things change. All right, and with that, I'm done. Thank you for listening to this month's monthly report. I'll be back again next month to do it all over again. In the meantime, if there's anything that I can do to help you with your real estate needs, uh, please give me a call. My number is 301-785-7144. I'd be happy to sit down and answer any of your real estate questions. Hope you guys are doing well. I look forward to doing it again next month. Take care.